Welcome back to another Outdoor Philosophy. Well, today we want to spend a little bit of time talking briefly about climate change. That's right. The world is going to end in a very short period of time and we're going to have to start eating our, our grandparents, our insects, and maybe even our babies. How dare you! But in all seriousness, it's worth talking about here because one of the greatest observations that I've seen, why is it that the number one person we're hearing about from climate change is a 16 year old person? Where are all of the scientists? Because of course we're talking about Greta Thunberg and if you are unaware, the very day that Greta Thunberg testified before United Nations in a stellar performance, which was absolutely a performance. There's actually some footage uh, of her that's not part of the not part of the conference being asked questions and the person can't string together three or four words. And um, that very day though that that famous speech went around over 500 actual PhDs in climate change issued a statement to the United Nations saying there is not a crisis. Now, does that mean that there's no change in what the climate is? No. There's always been change. Always has been changed. Okay, whether it's going from ice ages into warm spells, some places simply naturally become deserts over years. Now, does that have to do with us necessarily? Some of it, perhaps. Some of it, no. In reality, there's a lot of volcanoes, and one volcano does more to the planet than we can do in about a hundred years, depending on how well we are using our resources or not. So it boils down to this though, what's being used is this climate change work is being used not to, not to change our ideals or not to make the planet healthier, it's being pushed to win a political agenda. And they knew exactly what they were doing. They wanted to strike at the heart of the young people who tend to be more uh, democratic in their general approaches. They seem to think in their young ideology. Understand this, if you know the names of the various phases when you go through school, you have your freshman, you have your sophomore, your junior, your senior. You know what sophomore actually means? It's a compound Greek word. It means Sophia Moronis, the wise fool. A person gets to a certain age, and you've noted this if you've worked with teenagers, you get to the certain age where there's a period of time when you move from your childhood into starting to move into adulthood, and you start to think that you could solve all of the world's problems on your own. You think, man, if we just do this, it'll fix all of the world's problems. And so a lot of people have this wise approach, but in reality, they're really fools when we look upon all of the different factors taken as a whole. And so to target your climate change among your young people, number one, you're telling them that you don't have a future. Number two, we have to make radical changes now. And number three, they're very susceptible to the emotional charged arguments. As we've said, these are all emotionally charged. If you analyze that speech from Thunberg, you know, she said the, the beginning of a mass extinction. Um, I don't see any evidence of that. Citation, please. The world's going to end in 12 years. We saw the, oh, the Green New Deal. Yes. You see, this is all part of a political move, but now as this person is roaming around the world, we're going to die. We're going to die. What happens now is that a whole lot of people are now skipping classes to go and protest climate change. Even here in State College on Fridays, there's a bunch of that appears to be high school students out in front of the city hall protesting climate change, whole thing. And I would like, just like to stop and ask these people one day, can you point to a scientist that affirms with what you're saying? You can't. There are one or two little papers. In fact, one of those had major data retraction from uh, from uh, bad statistics and wanting to push certain agendas, overwhelmingly the science says, yeah, there's impact on the climate, but it's not this major massive critical thing, at least not in all the places where Greta happens to be going. 
You see, if you don't remember, way back in the 60s and 70s, there were oceans, and not oceans, but as much as rivers and lakes in this country, United States, that were catching on fire. And those are all cleaned up. They're, they're relatively safe now. They're not going to catch a flame anymore. Yeah, there were some bad things we had, but I remember the days. I mean, I remember when Captain Planet first came out. I remember when Earth Day was really big. And then I remember, of course, you know, the ozone layer is depleted. We're all going to die. Guys, these are things that we heard, I heard as a child growing up. The whole world's going to end by this date. The whole, every, the ozone layer is going to be gone. And... Greenhouse gases are going to rise it all up. The oceans are going to cover everything. Guys, by now, California and Florida and several other inland places are supposed to be completely underwater, and it hasn't happened yet. There is a degree of climate change. There is a degree that humans can cause it. Does this mean we're going to have a mass extinction? Absolutely not. Is there this crisis that we have to start eating our dead relatives and the insects? No. And by the way, that's not hyperbole. There's actual science lectures right now about maybe we should start thinking about eating our grandparents when they die. Maybe we should, you know, move and shift our diet towards insects because it's better for the planet than it is for, you know, cows and whatever else. And, and this is all part of certain propaganda from certain political parties. There's no evidence of any of this. Now, what can we do as individuals all the same? Now, should we go out and just radically change everything? Should we convert everything to solar? I got news for you. All these electric cars, you still got to charge them. The power that it takes to charge a car, the question is one of efficiency. Is the car more efficient at using energy? We're talking from the source. It's one thing if your car is not spewing forth CO2, but your car is spewing forth saved up CO2. You've already burnt it in the charging process. The power it takes to generate a solar panel, it would take about 40 years of that solar panel to be working to actually function. That one, I don't remember if that's an accurate statistic or not. Hopefully efficiency has increased. But when I first started looking into solar stuff, which was almost two decades ago, it would have been... I think it would have cost like $40,000. Uh, the break-even point would be 40 to 45 years, and the energy consumption breaking point, I think, was about 60 to 80 at that point in time. Hopefully it's getting better. But we can't focus on this consumer culture where we get the final solar panel and go, ah, perfect, it's there. We forget there's a huge industrial process to manufacture these things. The rare earth minerals that need to be mined, the heavy industry that needs to produce it, all of these possibly are pushing out a whole lot more impact on the environment than the panel itself. And so there's a lot of factors we have to take into consideration. Now, what do we as individual people do? I challenge Greta or any of these other high schoolers protesting climate change, I bet you that person for person, I am 75% or greater more energy efficient than they are. I guarantee it. I throw out like, I think two very small, I think they're, they're eight gallon maybe trash bags a week. That's just because I have cats and I need to clean out the litter box. Almost all of that. I maybe use five or six cans a year that need recycled. I get almost no real packaging. I will take my shopper's bags to the store. I will take my just my reusable produce bags to the store. I will bring little Tupperware containers so I can get things out of the bins without using more waste. The amount of waste I generate is extraordinarily small. Now, those are all the things that if all of us did a lot of these things, it would greatly help tremendously. But are we going to save the whole planet? Not by eating insects, we're not. This is all part of a political ploy to get us to be vegetarians and get away of our meats. It's all a ploy to get certain political parties into power. It's all a ploy to get the young people so focused on their emotions that they forget to think about their science. Put down your science, high school kids, and go back to school and actually study the science. You're going to find, there ain't nothing here. Or you're going to find, oh... The scientists have been wrong many, many, many times. In other words, do we have to have a little bit of concern? Absolutely. We are called to be good stewards of the earth. 
that means we're not being excessively wasteful for the sake of being wasteful. But while we do those things, while we do those things, what we have to do is we have to live our life as frugally as possible, without consumerism as much as possible, but we have to live it with our minds, not in an emotional turmoil, not running around doing a bunch of things because we think the whole world's going to end. We got to act now. No. Take a breath. Slow down. Do very small steps you can be do now yourself. And actually spend some time researching the science. And you will find these scientific predictions about climate change, they have been wrong more often than the weather reports. And that's a lot of wrong. So those are my thoughts on this daily walk. Let me know your thoughts. I'm sorry, this is an outdoor philosophy. It's my thoughts on this outdoor philosophy. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.